How wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about this beautiful object right here. Something that might resemble a CGI or computer modified image, but something that's actually taken by Hubble. This is an actual object that's out there. A type of an object referred to as the Herbic Halo object, or HH for short. And these Herbic Halo objects are honestly some of the most beautiful creations in the universe. Something that in some cases you can even see with your own telescope because a lot of them are visible in optical light. But very recently the Hubble telescope was able to take this beautiful image of an object known as HH111, which is one of the most impressive images of these objects ever taken. And so naturally I wanted to talk a little bit more about this and explain how all of this works, what's happening in this particular system, and also tell you a little bit more about the actual mechanism behind this. So first of all, a long time ago, it's very likely our sun also produced HH objects, because Herbic Halo objects are just a result of a young star releasing these very powerful and very hot jets, which then start colliding with the gas forming around the star. The name itself comes from the two people that discovered these objects and explained them separately back in the late 40s. And here we have the American George Herbic, and the Mexican astronomer Guillermo Haro. And so technically these are Herbic Haro objects, but I'm just gonna call them HH for short. And so generally whenever stars start to form, they often form these HH objects. So the object itself are not the jets, it's actually the result of the interaction of the jet with the gas around the star. And so in this case on the right you see that HH203 and 204 are these bright patches of light formed by the interaction of the jet and the gas around the star. And so how does all of this work? Well, it always starts with a relatively large cloud of gas. As this gas starts to sort of coalesce and create a larger and larger chunk, this initiates the star formation by essentially causing the gravitational collapse of the interstellar gas itself. And there are quite a lot of these clouds around the galaxy and many of them have been analyzed in quite a lot of detail. But as more and more of the gas starts to collapse, the density on the inside starts to increase as well. But with the increased density, the opacity of the cloud also starts to increase as well, which means that you cannot see through the cloud as easily and it can obviously no longer radiate as much energy. And this causes this entire system to reach a kind of an equilibrium. The relatively high temperature of the cloud prevents further collapse, forming a relatively stable shape that lasts for a pretty long time, thousands and thousands and possibly even up to a million years. But right in the middle of the system, we're going to have the protostar. It's not really a star yet, it's just a concentration of matter and it's going to be spinning really really fast. At some point, due to interactions that we don't really understand just yet, it's going to start forming these jets you see right here, normally in two opposite directions. These jets seem to have a lot of influence on the formation of the star, including potentially causing the star to lose a lot of mass it would have otherwise, something we've discussed in one of the previous videos. But these jets seem to be pretty much in every star system and they seem to be really important. They also seem to be responsible for recycling a lot of material and allowing other stars to be created afterwards as well. There's also a lot of various types of magnetic interaction going on here, which is by the way probably how these jets are made as well. And what's really interesting here is that because of this magnetic interaction, it also seems to occasionally feed the star, allowing it to grow larger and larger. But most importantly, as these jets grow in power and as they start to throw off a lot more mass, they start to create these formations in pretty much most of the systems we've observed so far. And they also seem to be responsible for removing a lot of the angular momentum from the spinning star. And so apparently, if these jets did not exist, the stars would not exist either. The stars would spin so fast that they would never really be able to maintain their shape and would eventually just fall apart, kind of similar to how a lot of asteroids that start spinning too fast become smaller and smaller over time, simply because the rotation itself starts to cause them to fall apart. But in this case, these jets, they remove the angular momentum and make the star slow down just a little bit, just enough for it to start growing larger and larger. But since these objects are inside larger clouds, these jets, as they start moving away from the star, they start to collide with parts of the clouds that are more dense. And as the jets start hitting the clouds, they create a much brighter patch of this, what's known as nebulosity. 
The extremely bright glow that seems to appear inside the cloud itself. Here is the objects known as HH161 and HH164, also taken by the Hubble telescope a few years ago. And so here's actually another really good example, HH34, with the star itself that's right here throwing off this very powerful and extremely hot jet, which then hits the very dense patch of a gas right here, and this is the HH34 object representing the highly ionized gas that starts to glow and starts to emit a lot of energy. And interestingly, these objects can last for a few thousand years. Although obviously they don't stay constant, they do change a lot and they actually emit different light at different frequencies and also change the luminosity once in a while. As a matter of fact, NASA even has this beautiful time lapse you can find in the description that shows how this jet changed in roughly around 14 years. And so these are pretty well studied phenomena, and although jets are normally visible in the infrared light, a lot of them are also visible in optical light as well. And because of the way that they are formed and because of the way that all of this works, these HH objects are obviously always on the move, and they move as the jet sort of passes through the cloud and extends farther and farther away from the star system or from the protostar system. But even in the period of a few years, they can change enough to be visible to human eye. And so even though this is a pretty slow process, if you were to take a few pictures a few years apart, generally you would be able to tell a difference. Which is obviously the result of the jet itself moving away farther from the star. But one of the questions here would be, how big is all of this? Well, in this case, it's usually a few light years across. On average, a typical HH object is anywhere from 3 to 5 light years away from the central star. And they'll always be located along the rotational axis of the star, because that's where the jets are released and that's where they collide with the clouds. But unlike astrophysical jets from black holes or neutron stars, the speed here is much, much slower. It's usually under a thousand kilometers per second or normally a few hundred kilometers per second. So about a thousand times slower than from a neutron star or a black hole. But the recently taken image of HH111 is a little bit different. Even though it might not be apparent right away, this is a binary HH system with the system itself very likely resembling something like this. We have a large jet coming this way, and then we have a slightly smaller jet going in almost perpendicular direction, which means that the two stars here are misaligned. But interestingly enough, there's also a third star, but it's not producing any jets. As a matter of fact, it seems to have been kicked out from the system. That's the object you see right here. And though it's not really that easily visible in this image, it's more apparent in one of the older images from the Spitzer telescope. You can sort of see it right here with the two really bright objects in the middle. And here's another really interesting time lapse taken by the Hubble pretty much three decades ago, showing us how the jet itself transforms in roughly around four years, with the distance right here representing thousand times the distance of Earth to the Sun. But naturally, because this is about 1400 light years away from us, you do need to have a powerful telescope if you wanted to see any of this yourself. Most of the parts of this jet are actually only visible in the infrared. And at the same time, these are some of the largest jets from a protostar we've seen so far. Each of them is about 12 light years in length. So this is definitely one of the more powerful protostars out there. But what's really interesting about this phenomenon is that it doesn't seem to be only in stars. It may also affect smaller objects. We don't really know if it affects gas giants, such as Jupiter and Saturn, but it definitely seems to affect brown dwarfs. Back in 2017, the scientists discovered at least one brown dwarf, or I guess proto-brown dwarf, that seems to be forming these jets and also HH objects as well. All of this sort of looks like this, with each of them identified in this image. And so this is a phenomenon that seems to exist everywhere in the universe and seems to be responsible for helping a lot of different objects evolve to a certain extent. And specifically, it all relates to these jets that seem to be ubiquitous and seem to be really important for the star formation and, to some extent, to brown dwarf formation and possibly even planetary formation as well. But, ironically, we still don't really understand how they form and what exactly makes them work the way they work. Nevertheless, these are some of the most intriguing and most interesting visual phenomena out there, and they will definitely help us solve a lot of mysteries about the universe. But for now, that's all I wanted to mention. And so hopefully now you know a little bit more about the Herbic Haro or Herbic Hero objects, and you kind of know a little bit more about what this image is all about. 
On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.